Welcome to the tutorial on researching data. This tutorial will discuss the different types of data journalists should consistently incorporate into their stories, as well as how journalists can collect and manage that data. Journalists are responsible for researching and then reporting data to the public. New data that comes out or that gets discovered by investigative journalists gives the public new information, which it can use to guide its decisions. In addition, new data grabs people's attentions and interests them, which means the journalists who reported that information get those readers' attentions as well. Journalists also use data to build trust with their readers and convince people to listen to what they are saying. Data that supports the statements a journalist makes can help that journalist to prove to his or her readers that the reports are things people should take seriously and believe. Finally, journalists can choose how to best convey information to the public. Some data may be most effectively described in words, whereas other data might be more easily understood if it is conveyed visually through infographics. It is up to the journalist to decide which display method will benefit his readers most. Since the data is everywhere you look and can be gathered using nearly any research tool or human sense, it is important to know the differences between the two types of data you can utilize in a story. The first type of data is quantitative data. This is a traditional type of mathematical data you think of when you imagine the statistical results of a poll, the averages of something, or other numerical data. The second type of data is qualitative data. This type of data refers to the observations people make when they witness something. This data is often so obvious that we do not think about it as being data, but it is. Let us examine each type of data in a little more detail. Quantitative data is information related to numerical values. If your data answers the question of how many are there, then it is quantitative data. Such information can be measured or counted in a specific manner. For example, cost, time, population, income, location, speed, height, and weight are all pieces of quantitative data because they all relate to numbers. However, quantitative data can also be presented in the form of percentages or any other mathematical unit. Usually, quantitative data is best described to your readers in the form of an infographic so that they can depict the information quickly through a visualization. Since it can be hard or just take a lot of time to describe such data in words, images are usually a more effective and fast method for conveying quantitative information to your audience. On the other hand, qualitative data is usually best described using words. That is because qualitative data relates to observations and describes the quality of something. Since it is a description, it is easily conveyed in verbal form, but hard to capture in visual form. Sights, sounds, smells, tastes, and textures are all examples of qualitative data. For journalists, qualitative data is usually obtained one of two ways. Through the journalist's first-hand account of the situation, or through a witness or participant's first-hand account of a situation. Therefore, you will obtain qualitative data through the stories you're told in interviews, the quotes you receive, or your own observations of an event. You just have to be a wise enough reporter to ask your interviewees questions about the relative qualitative data. Now, naturally, you will have to analyze the accuracy of the data you are given, or that you find, by researching the validity of your source and or looking for other sources to confirm that data. In particular, consider whether you are using a valid source for the type of data you are being given. Also consider what exactly your source's relation was to the thing being described. And finally, consider how close your source was to the location or event being described. For example, if your source was not even present at the event, then the value of that qualitative data would be very low and you would want to look for another source. 
When you are trying to determine the validity of the data you have accumulated, whether it is qualitative or quantitative data, you can do online research to help you. If you are conducting online research, then be sure to evaluate the credibility of the internet sources you are using. Make sure that both the author and the publisher of the information are reputable and have relevant knowledge or experience in the subject matter you are researching. It is also a good idea to double check the timeliness of the report to ensure it was published recently and that nothing has changed since the report was released. If you are conducting interviews or doing online research to verify your sources, then be sure you research the event in detail and the jargon or technical language related to the subject matter of the interview so that you can ask insightful questions about the topic. It will also be important to know what follow-up questions to ask and to double-check that other sources support what your interviewee has said. If you're researching on the internet, then there are a few helpful tools you can use. Most journalists will start by conducting general research on their story topic using a search engine like Google. But it is important to know how to effectively and efficiently conduct research using Google. For example, if you are searching for an exact phrase, then you should put that phrase in quotation marks. And if you would like to have more than one phrase appear in your search results, then put a plus sign between each of the phrases you want to appear in the search results. In contrast, if you want some phrases to appear in the search results, but not other phrases, then you should use a minus sign in your search. The minus sign should appear right before the phrase you want excluded from the search results. Some more advanced search features that Google has include the ability to search within a particular type of website by typing in site colon and then the ending extension of the website you want to search within. You will need to put this before you write your actual search phrase. That way your search results will only come from that particular type of website and will still reflect the phrase you searched for. Another advanced search feature that Google has is a search within a particular file type, which you can do by typing in file type colon and then the ending extension of the type of file you want to search for. Again, you will need to put this before you write your actual search phrase so that your search results will only include that specific type of file and any results that hit will also include the phrase you searched for. Finally, the Google Advanced Search feature is extremely useful. It allows you to easily search via region, dates a website was last updated, or a number of other helpful criteria. So I would encourage you to explore that advanced search feature whenever you are conducting research. And it will be important to keep track of the data you collect, of course. No matter how you find it, the data you compile must be kept organized. You must also keep track of the original source of each piece of data so that you can include proper attributions in your stories. One of the easiest ways to keep track of your data is to input it all in a spreadsheet that has a column for the data and another column for the source of that data. However, another simple way to keep track of your research, particularly if you are conducting research online, is to use internet bookmarks. Just be sure to label each bookmark with a detailed description and put each story's research into its own bookmark folder. The benefit of bookmarks is that the original source is right there in the URL, so you know you will not lose the attribution information you need. Those are some of the ways journalists can find and manage different types of data. Moving forward, try to force yourself to utilize each type of data in every publication and apply some of the research tools mentioned in this tutorial. With time and practice, you will get used to taking these steps and they'll become an automatic part of your routine as a journalist. Thank you for listening and good luck researching your stories.